Hi, I'm Radek, I'm a developer advocate at QuickNote, and in this video I will show you step by step how to stake Ethereum completely on your own. Specifically, I will walk you through the hardware for staking Ethereum, how to install the operating system on your hardware, how to fund your validator with uh, 32 ETH needed to stake, how to install and run your execution and consensus clients, how to make sure that everything runs continuously even after a restart, then how to monitor your validator and create helpful dashboards with all the important stats about it, and by doing all of the above, how to earn your Ethereum staking rewards. Ready? Let's go! About a year ago, I bought an Intel NUC to run an Ethereum node on it. It worked well for the purpose, but it only had one terabyte SSD, which was good for an Ethereum node. But if I want to run a validator, I needed two terabytes, so I needed to purchase a new SSD. NUC had 16 gigabytes of memory, perfectly fine for my needs, so I don't need more, I just need two terabytes. Here I'm replacing the SSD so that I have the capacity that I need, and once the SSD is replaced, the disk is completely empty. So I need to install a new operating system. For Ethereum staking, Ubuntu is the best bet. So first I need to download Ubuntu and create a bootable image, which I will then place on a flash drive that will be used to boot the NUC and install the system. To do that, I will use Balena Etcher app. Flashing the USB stick takes a couple of minutes, then verifying takes a couple more. And when the flash drive is ready, it's time to boot the NUC with it. To bring out the boot menu, you usually need to press F12 or F10. For my NUC, it was F10. Now it's time to boot. And here's how the setup looks. It's pretty straightforward. Cables for keyboard, mouse, then Ethernet cable for stability and speed of connection, and the cable to the monitor. After selecting the flash drive to boot from, go through the installation system. It should take about 5-10 minutes to install. I chose more or less the default options that Ubuntu was presenting. And now the system is live and we are ready to go. So first, I need to create a new user. I don't want to do everything with the default account or even worse, with the root account. So I'm creating an Ethereum account and setting the password, then granting the new user admin rights by adding it to a super user group. Once it's done, then update and upgrade the system. If it was a fresh install, then this step can take 10 or 15 minutes and then clean up after the installation. Now that we have a fresh and clean operating system, let's start the process to become a validator. Process in this video will be done for Girdly for a test network. So I will use Girdly Launchpad on Ethereum. But for mainnet, the process is more or less the same, practically identical, with a couple command options for network being different during the setup process. So to start, go to girly launchpad ethereum.org uh, and go through the list. Uh, read and understand what each item means. They're all important. And crucially, you will need to have 32 ETH to start staking. Testnet or mainnet in it 32 ETH, which is a non-trivial amount even on testnet, but obviously on mainnet as well. You will also need a stable, reliable and fast internet connection and your validator performance and your staking rewards will rely on that. So make sure that your connection is fast and stable. After going through the checklist, it's time to decide on the execution client. So what you will need to run your Ethereum node with. 
You'll also need a consensus client, but we'll do that in the next step. So there are multiple execution clients and multiple consensus clients. Which one to choose? Usually going with the most popular option is a good choice, but not in this case. On the clientdiversity.org website, you can check which ones are the most popular at the moment. And the best bet is not to choose the most popular one. Diversity is uh, not just important for a more resilient network, but it's critical. It takes two thirds, 66% of validators to reach finality. So if a client with more than 66% of market share has a bug and forks to its own chain, then it will be able to finalize. Once the fork finalizes, the validators cannot return to the real chain without being slashed. If 66% of the chain gets slashed simultaneously, the penalty is the whole 32 ETH. It's a small risk, but it's something that you need to be aware of. And it's better to contribute to decentralization than to centralization. So to run an Ethereum node, the execution client, I will go with Aragon. And for consensus, it's going to be Lighthouse. For Aragon, the GitHub has all the installation instructions and start with downloading the latest version. And next, I also need to have Go programming language installed on my system. I'll need to go and extract it. So download Go, then extract it, then add go to your path and verify if it works. It does, but it doesn't work in a new terminal window. So we need to add it to dot profile to work system wide. Then source the dot profile file and now everything works fine. Go is installed. Now it's time to compile and build Aragon. Aragon is compiled, built and working. How much disk space are we using at this point? Barely anything, 18 gigs so far out of two terabytes. Now create the data directory for Aragon. This is where the blockchain data will be stored and update user owner for the directory. Communication between execution and consensus clients is secured using JSON Web Token, JWT. It's a file that contains a randomly generated 32 byte hex string. So let's generate it. So store the file at secrets folder, create the JWT secret file and enable read access to it. And now it's time to create a service config file to configure the Aragon service. A service is the program that runs in the background and it doesn't need the interaction of the user and it lacks an interface. This is in order to provide more security and also for easily bringing the service up after failure, system reboot or power outage. Service is configured to relaunch automatically with all the required options, with no action needed on the user's part. All the important parts of the validator will be configured using services. So you'll see a lot more of this process. So first configure everything in a service config file, then reload the services, enable the service, start the service, and then view status logs to see if everything works fine. And this is an example of a service config file for Aragon. It has a description and then all the options for the service. It shows what's the user, when to restart the service, what's the timeout for the service, and then the exec start is the full command with all the options for the service that it's configured for. A few options to note here is chain is girly. JWT secret option is the path to our secret file that we generated earlier. We also need to add external CL flag to indicate that we will be using an external consensus client for validator duties. And we will also be adding the matrix flag to create the matrix output for 
monitoring that we will configure later on. Then save the config file. After that, reload the daemon and enable the service. Then start the Aragon service and view service logs to make sure that everything is working properly. Disk space used at this time around 200 gigabytes. Before we go to the step of installing the consensus client, we need to first create the validator keys because these will be needed for setting up the consensus client. So in the launch part, if we choose the number of validators, we'll need one, the operating system, and we'll use the Vagu app to create the validator keys. Download Vagu at vagu.gg. Choose your operating system, put it in the downloads folder. Then when trying to open the file, it doesn't open because it's an app image file and it needs to have a Fuse library. So let's install Fuse. Now run the Wagyu keygen file again and it should open fine now. Select the appropriate network in the top right corner. For us, it's Girdly. And in the next step, it will create a secret recovery phrase for you. Write it down. You won't be able to retrieve your funds without it. It's best to write it down physically, not to copy it into a file on your system. After that, retype the secret recovery phrase in the next step to make sure that you got it right. Then create a password and add your withdrawal address. It's your wallet where you want to get the funds. Retype the password and choose a folder where you'll store your keys. I selected home Ethereum keys. It will be needed later on when configuring the consensus client. And when you're done, two files will be created and put into your keys folder, the key store file and the deposit data file. Now it's time to install our consensus client, which is going to be Lighthouse. For the same reason as choosing Aragon for execution, we'll choose the one that is not the most popular for decentralization, safety and protocol health. And for installation, Lighthouse Book has all the necessary installation and configuration info at lighthouse-book.sigmaprime.io. So download it extract the archive and then copy the lighthouse file to user local bin. Create a directory to store the validator data and then run the validator import process. Make sure to provide the correct path to the generated keys directory that we did in the previous step. Enter the password for the keys so that you don't need to enter it each time the validator client restarts when you might not be around and when it's important that the client automatically goes live after a failure. This will import the validator and now add a new user for the beacon node. Create a directory and change the owner to the new user and create a service config file for the beacon node. Command options to look out for is network should be girly, data there for the correct directory to store it, metrics to be able to run metrics and dashboards later, same as for the execution client, execution JWT for the correct secret location. You should choose one from the list of Ethereum beacon chain add points at the URL somewhere down here. I'll choose one for Girly, but there are multiple options for mainnet, for Girly, for Sepolia whatever you want. And after that, start the service and check the status. Everything's working fine. Check the logs of the service and then enable it. Next, add the user for the validator, change the owner of the folder and create a config file for a validator. Limited number of options here. Important ones is uh, 
suggested fee recipient. It's your wallet address where you want to collect the fees. Network is girly. And the last one is graffiti. I put validator here. This allows you to add your personal touch to blockchain, add whatever you want to your proposed blocks as graffiti. Just try not to share info that easily identifies you. Other than that, go wild. Then start the service, check the status, check the logs and enable the validator. At this point, we are using about 500 gigs out of two terabytes. So our Ethereum node is running in the background and syncing all the blockchain data. So the usage is growing. Now it's time to fund the validator with 32 ETH. First, let's have a look at the keys that were generated previously. It's in the keys directory and uh, it should look something like deposit underscore data and key store dash M with some numbers. And in the launchpad at the step upload deposit data, upload the first file, the deposit data file. Connect your wallet that you will be funding the validator from and it should have at least 32 ETH in it with a little bit more for gas fees. Make sure that you're connected to the right network and that you have enough balance. And once you do that, go to the next step and click confirm deposit and confirm the transaction in your wallet. This is the exact moment when you will be sending a 32 ETH to fund your validator. So make sure that you are connected to the correct network, that you are sending the transaction to the correct contract address and that the function name next to contract address is deposit. Confirmed. Transaction has started. You can check on Etherscan if and when it went through. We are funding it with 32 ETH. Transaction successful. Let's reload Etherscan. Success. Okay, so we have funded our validator with 32 ETH. Let's finalize the rest of the process. We can check the status on Beacon Chain. At the beginning, the first few minutes, it will not be visible on Beacon Chain. So you need to be a little bit patient. And after a while, the status will change. And the first step is a green check mark that you have deposited. And now it's in the pending status. So you are waiting for your Ethereum node to run fully and to be fully in sync and the validator to, to go live and start validating. So great success. Your stake has reached the deposit contract. You have one validator. Current APR is about 4.1%. And now it makes sense to go through validator checklist to do before, during and after with focusing on after. Make sure to check the section about security. And now the next thing is monitoring. So we have our validator running, syncing, and we need to monitor the performance. Is everything going well? Is it live? How busy it is? How much system resources does it use? Is it in danger or not? Is it in a healthy state? All of that uses the metric flags that we used in the previous steps. So now we will be able to take advantage of that and to configure the monitoring processes. The first one is Prometheus. And we will set up the monitoring server with Prometheus. So download the latest release from Prometheus.io, then extract and copy it to user local bin, copy the directories to the correct locations in the system, and then clean up after the whole process. Add a new user for monitoring and create a directory to store 
files. Then create a Prometheus config file. This is the default file. You don't need everything here. It has multiple clients. We are only using Aragon and Lighthouse. We don't need the rest, so it's safe to delete those. Make sure that you have the correct port in there. Change file ownership to Prometheus. And now it's time to create a service config file for Prometheus so that it runs and restarts automatically. Add the directories for Prometheus and add the correct port and then save the file, start the service and check the status. Everything's working fine. So now it's time to enable the Node Explorer which is the service that exposes the operating system metrics for your Ubuntu server. Download the latest version, extract it, copy it to user local bin, and clean up after the process. Then add a new user for node exporter and create a service the usual steps. This one doesn't have many options to configure, so just save and go on to enable the service and to check the status. Everything seems to be working fine. Node exporter is listening, so it's ready to work. Now that we have all the monitoring capabilities, we want to be able to look at the nice graphs and see at a glance what's going on. For that, we will use Grafana. Grafana provides helpful and good-looking dashboards for you to see what's going on with your validator. And it has multiple options for dashboards, for example, for your consensus client, for your execution client, for your operating system load, everything else. So to start, at Grafana sources, then refresh the sources. Make sure that it's being installed from the repository. You can check the latest version at grafana.com slash grafana slash download. Then install Grafana and start Grafana server. Check the logs if everything is working fine and then enable Grafana server. The server is running and listening, so it's time to enable it. Now that it's running, go to localhost 3000 and you should see the login screen for Grafana. Username and password is admin. And in the next step, you'll create a new password for your Grafana server. To create a dashboard, you first need to add a data source. So click on config icon and select data sources. Add the data source and choose Prometheus. Configure it with the correct port that you chose previously and everything else should be fine as default options. Click save and test. Data source is working, so everything is fine. Now go to dashboards and select import and import JSON file. I provide all the links in the description of the video, so go there, import JSON file that you need and you will have the dashboard. For now, it's not helpful while the validator is not live yet, but we will see in a minute how it looks once validator is running. So we have Grafana, we have imported the config files, we have the graffiti, we have everything that we need for our validator to go live. Now it's just a matter of waiting until we have the validator confirmed. It says about two days uh, once everything was synced. So after syncing, it said uh, that it needs about two days for the validator to become active. It actually took about three days. And here you can see everything about the execution layer, the consensus layer, the withdrawal credentials, everything is set properly. Now it's a matter of waiting until the validator becomes active and until I start earning income on my validator. And now let's start validating. Let's start activating it. So boom, now we have it active. Our validator is active. It took a few days, 
but now everything is fine. Congratulations, you are live, you are validating on blockchain, be it girly, be it mainnet, wherever you chose to do it. These were the blocks proposed and consensus income from the proposed blocks. This is a validator history of attestations. There was a maintenance in progress when I was recording this. So the income is showing zero, but uh, at the time when it wasn't in maintenance mode, it was showing about between four and 7% APR, which was quite decent. So congratulations, you are a validator now. And to check how Grafana reports look like, we go to node exporter. And here you see localhost 9100 and all the stats about CPU, about memory usage, everything is in green nicely, resource usage, CPU, memory, network bandwidth, disk read and write, system load, disk space, everything you need to make sure that your validator is running, that it's in a healthy state, that everything is fine and that you should not be worried about your validator. And you can check more imported dashboards from Grafana for all the aspects of your validator or your system or whatever else you choose. This is just an example of one dashboard. Okay, your validator is running, everything is fine, but I haven't covered everything in one video. So what else do you need to take into account when staking on your own? So the most important thing is to go through the whole checklist on Ethereum Launchpad, uh, especially after depositing what you can do. I haven't covered node security in great detail. So we didn't use the root account, but I didn't show how to set up a firewall or which ports to use. You can see it in the video, but I didn't go into great detail. So go through that. Configure time sync. It should be configured automatically when you install Ubuntu, but make sure that you have it configured and running properly because it can mess up your rewards. Testnet simulations. We have configured everything as services. So you should be covered with this. So simulate how to manually stop and restart your beacon. Everything should go live without your intervention. So go through that and make sure that you have everything covered. And this is how you set up and run your own Ethereum validator from scratch. Happy decentralizing, happy earning. See you soon.